Season 5 is finally here, and I am very excited to be working with some new artifacts and new builds. Well, in today's video, we are going to be starting off our build with the musket build, which is similar to Season 4, but with some different twists and changes based around the Nature's Wrath chess piece. Before we fully get into today's video, I do just want to say if this video helps you out, or if you just like it, please drop it a like, it really helps me out a lot. And if you want to see more content like this, including more Season 5 build videos, loot videos, stuff like that, definitely subscribe to the channel so you know when those videos go up. But let's get into today's video. Alright, so it has been a while since I've done a new build video, mainly because at the end of a season, I know with the season change, I'm going to be potentially changing some builds up and trying some new stuff. So it is finally time to release a new build video, which is kind of just a rework of one of my previous builds, which is my musket uh, with Void Golem build. So to get us started, let's take a look at the gear here. And you're going to notice that a lot of my gear is very similar to season four with some slight changes. So we will go through it really quick here. Um, with all of my gear outside of my chest piece, I am going to have nature harnessing. Most of them will have health, or some of them will have health at least. And then I think I have two stacks of thrust conditioning. So hat there, we got full ints. With this one, we do have crippling powder burn and a stack of refreshing, which I wasn't too upset with. Uh, this one, thrust conditioning, health, nature harnessing. And then I do have nullifying oblivion because I got a good deal on these pants. I just kind of went with them and having the nullifying oblivion uh, doesn't hurt anything. But if you do want to go with more of a defensive perk, you can definitely do that um, instead of doing the nullifying oblivion. So the other thing that you're going to notice with my armor pieces outside of the chest piece is going to be that I'm running rune glass with it. So I'm actually running uh, the nature rune glass. So I have a 2% nature buff from the harnessing and 2% for the rune glass itself per piece of armor that I have both the harnessing and rune glass on. So with that, that's 4, 8, 12, 16% increased nature damage just from my armor alone. And then obviously for the chest piece, I am trying out the Nature's Wrath. I've done a bit of testing with it, and I am really, really happy. I know it, that some people have tried it with some of their bow builds or some of the other builds in general and not noticed a huge difference, but I'm going to show you some of the reasons why I really like it and what you can do to try to kind of maximize the most out of it because with the Empower's uh, expiring 200% faster, it is kind of tricky to figure out how can I get that damage back because maybe that 20% extra damage isn't enough for you. But uh, we're definitely going to go over that and you'll kind of see where I'm heading with this. So that's what we got for the armor. For the weapons, this is the same as I normally run. We got Life Taker and we're running Slowing Tether on it. And then I have my Syncretic Musket with Arboreal Tunement, Keenly Jagged, and Enchanted, along with a Rune Glass with the Amber inside. For jewelry, I'm still rocking this same amulet with the Health Divine Thrust Protection, which if you don't have this one as far as a crafted or a pulled one, you can definitely, I believe it's the Tangle Vine, has, it's either Health and Thrust Protection or Divine and Thrust Protection. I don't remember exactly, um, but the Tangle Vine, I believe, is the one that you'd be looking for that you could craft for a named item. For my ring, I have hardy nature damage, and this one has purifying heart. That third perk being purifying heart, you can definitely change that around, try something different. Um, just depends on what you can get your hands on. I ended up crafting this one and just kind of went with it because it's what I've got. But you can definitely try some other things. Purifying heart, though, can be really, really good depending on what build you're running. If you get your heart runes back fairly quickly, um, then it's kind of nice because you can shed all of those debuffs and potentially survive certain situations. For my earring, currently I'm running Endless Thirst. I am thinking about changing it. Endless Thirst is really, really good still, but when you pair it with the Nature's Wrath, the Empowering Toast is just kind of nullified. You do not get that empowerment because it expires 200% faster, but you still get the Fortifying Toast, Refreshing Toast in my case, and then the Thirst is the big one. So I'm still rocking it because it's really, really nice to have my health pots do a little bit more healing. Um, just keep in mind that if you're pairing it with Nature's Wrath, the Empowering Toast is not going to be working. And then for my Heart Rune, I'm still rocking Biobomb. You can run kind of whatever you want for a Heart Rune. Um, cannon Blast works, anything like that. But I do recommend, you know, either Stone Form or something that has some range like Biobomb or uh, Cannon Blast. So that's kind of what I got going for gear. I don't have my armor or my ammo equipped just because of testing stuff and PVE. I don't want to waste my Ori ammo, um, but I do recommend using your ammo because I oftentimes forget those of you who are in stream 
sometimes have to remind me, hey, you're not using ammo. Um, it happens to the best of us, right? Um, but this is the gear that I've been rocking. Really, really happy with it. Um, but next, let's go take a look over at the attributes, and then we're going to hop into the mastery because the mastery for this build is going to be quite a bit different from any of my previous builds. Okay, so taking a look over at the mastery here, we'll briefly go over the Void Gauntlet. So as you can see with this build, I do work towards Glimpse of the Void. Glimpse of the Void is absolutely fantastic. If you have not used it, I do recommend trying it. Try to get used to that um, because you can get instant cooldown recovery from it. Um, it's really, really good because if you have those four stacks of the uh, Void Essence, then if you land a heavy attack, you are going to get all your cooldowns back. So you can kind of burn through your cooldowns, land a heavy, get it back it's really really nice but otherwise as far as the passives go everything that i put into it is going to be either crit chance related or it's going to be cooldown related and main reason for that is because again the empowerments don't really do a whole lot for us but there are two things that do and that is going to be our oblivion and our tether those are actually two empowerments that do actually work with the nature's wrath chest piece and i will go into detail a little bit later why um, I'll show you at the training dummies. We'll take a look at it. I'll kind of show you what's happening with it so you can see and maybe get a better understanding of it. But just for the build itself, this is what I'm rocking for the Void Gauntlet. Next, let's take a look at the musket. And as you can see, this is a very, very different build for me. Um, it might not look like it, but as you can see with Power Shot, we are only rocking the first perk of Power Shot. We're not going any deeper. And the reason for that is because when we do that, we're actually wasting one perk and we're making up for one of the perks. So this perk being that it's an empower, this will not proc for you because of the fact that we're wearing the nature's wrath. So do not go anything that is going to give you an empower that has a time limit on it, like a five seconds, 10 seconds, anything like that. You want to avoid any empower. The other two abilities or perks that come along with the power shot also are not great for me. 10% additional damage to targets with full health. Well, usually I'm leading with a powder burn and then following up with my power shot. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then with the power shot headshots, reducing power shots cooldown by 10%. Instead, what I'm running is the called shot resupply. So basic attack headshots reduce all musket ability cooldowns by 10%. So it's essentially a very very similar cooldown reduction to this and therefore these three perks are just not needed from there i didn't know what i wanted to do for my perks or where i wanted to apply them and so what did i ended up doing because i did want to get to the dead eye because it is a 15 percent damage increase to all headshots that is not an empower that is just a stacked damage bonus so you do not have to worry about the nature's wrath affecting that well affecting it negatively i should say so what I did instead is we went for cooldown. So when we're doing like OPRs and we're shooting through a clump or something, if we can make sure we're aiming at head level, there's a good chance we are going to have a bunch of our reload time. So there's been times where I'm able to shoot and then shoot really, really quick afterwards because you land enough headshots, it will actually reduce the duration of that next reload by quite a bit if you're landing headshots, that is. So it's really, really interesting. I do highly recommend trying it. You do have to land headshots, obviously, but if you're landing the headshots, you're also applying a 10% weaken to that whole group. So it is not a huge weaken, but it is something that you can add. The other perk that we're running is the called shot. So increase musket damage by 10% after aiming down sights for more than two seconds. That is also not an empowerment. It does not get negatively affected by nature's wrath. Um, you can aim down sight for two seconds and it will increase your damage output. The next perk on this left side is the optimal range. The musket shots deal 10% increased base damage to targets 20 meters or further away from the player. Also deal 5% increased damage to targets within 50 meters. So what that is meaning is, or what that means is that it is, again, not an empowerment. It is just an increase in damage to our base damage. So therefore, it is not affected negatively by nature's wrath. On the Trapper Tree, we did want to try to get down to Sticky Bomb because I am a Sticky Bomb fan. I think it's really, really good. And what we have is Salt on the Wounds, so deal 10% increased damage to targets below 30%. Again, not an empowerment, does not negatively get affected by the Nature's Wrath. 
Next is the weakened defense, so increases the stam damage from standard shot dealt to enemies blocking with shields which by 50%, which isn't huge, but what you do receive is a 10% armor penetration against targets that are not blocking with a shield. So it's a 10% armor pen, again, not an empowerment or anything like that. And then from there, I do go with the haste because we had an extra point, so you get a 10% haste. You get the dodge reload, and then the last one being a 10% extra damage to targets with an active crowd control status effect, slow root stun. So when we apply the powder burn, we're still doing the same combinations where it's powder burn, then power shot, then regular shots, right? So again, if we land that power shot or that uh, powder burn that applies the slow effect with it because we have the, you know, slowing powder burn. And then from there... We get a 10% increase in damage on top of the fact that we get a 10% once they're below 30% and so on and so forth. So again, this whole build, this whole musket build does not have a single empowerment stack within the build itself. It is all just based around either reload time. So essentially like a cooldown in, in that sense. We do have some cooldown reduction. Otherwise, every other bit of damage increase is based around non-empowerment or just base damage increase, whether the enemy is below a certain amount or whether they're CC'd or something like that. So this whole build is like very, very different from what I've normally ran. And I was very hesitant. I didn't know if it would actually do what I wanted and give me the damage output that I wanted. But I was pleasantly surprised at the amount of damage I can do and how consistent it is because I'm not relying on those empowerments to constantly be triggering and procking in order to keep my damage up. It is very, very, very consistent damage with this build. But next, let's head over to the training W's and I'm going to show you some of what you can do with the build and kind of what I'm talking about when it comes to stacking the damage because you don't have to stack it as much. It's much, much more consistent, but there are a couple ways that you can stack it and we'll kind of go over that next. All right, so we're here over at the training dummies and they're actually kind of bugged out right now and I'll actually show you what I mean. So with the void gauntlet, when you actually hit it, it's not triggering the light attacks for some reason it's only triggering the disintegrate so what i'm going to say is tether will give you an empowerment but it will not give it to you on the training dummies for some reason so i can show you on an ad a little bit later but let's go over some of the other damage stacking and stuff first so with the void gauntlet um, it is an empowerment and let's take a look at the actual abilities itself. So what it says is you, uh, you know, summon a five meter radius circular rift of void energy at your feet for six seconds that deals 28% weapon damage per second to enemies and grants empower to self and friendlies increasing damage by 15%. There is no time on it. It is not, you will receive an empowerment for 10 seconds or anything like that. And then once that's gone, then you know, you lose the empowerment. It is an empowerment that as long as you're in the circle, you will receive it. It cannot reduce the duration of your oblivion circle. So your oblivion circle is a constant 15% empower. As long as you're standing in it, you will receive it. So that is the first one. The other one is with tether. Now with tether, although the tether itself is timed, it does not consider the empowerment as timed because once that tether breaks, you lose the empowerment. So if you don't have the tether, you don't receive the empowerment. So as long as that tether is connected, you have a constant empower just like the oblivion. So therefore, if you have an oblivion, which is a 15% plus your tether, that is another 20%. That's a 35% empowerment on top of the fact that we have our nature harnessing and nature damage altogether. Total, we have an increase of 23% on our nature harnessing, rune glass, and ring. You add that into the empowerment from the oblivion circle and the tether, which is another 35%. And we're at essentially empowerment cap just like that. So you can still reach empowerment cap on top of the fact of having the 20% increased damage from the nature's wrath. Because from my understanding is the nature's wrath is not considered as part of the empowerment cap. It should be part of the base damage. If that is incorrect or if it is different, please let me know down in the comments because from my testing, it seemed like it is more base damage based and it doesn't actually affect the amount of empowerments you have um, outside of it just reduces your duration, but you still are able to stack up to a full empowerment stacks um, and get the most out of it. And I'll show you here. So when we actually drop the oblivion circle, see at the bottom, it does pop up the 
empowerment right here. Your damage is increased by 15%. And we will kind of prove it out and show you. I'm going to wait until this honing stone is actually out so we can get a more accurate reading. So when we just take a normal shot, we're looking at, we're just going to look at the thrust damage to start. So 1670, right? Drop that. 1920. And 1920. So it is guaranteeing that you are actually getting that increased damage. So you get the empowerment from the Oblivion, you get the empowerment from the Tether, and then you get all the extra damage increase from your Powder Burn being a slow, them being under 30%. So you stack all of that and you're able to actually stack even more damage than you previously were because the fact that Nature's Wrath is applying the 20% to all of your damage like that for your at least your base damage so let me just go show you really quick to prove that the tether does work and i'll show you because it acts like it is a timed empowerment because it's going to, sh it's going to show a time but it's not actually the time of the empowerment as much as it is as it is the time of the tether so we'll shoot this guy here so there's one empowerment and then at the bottom see that two empowerments so now we have the two empowerments going and we maintain the tether until the tether is gone or the enemy is dead. So there, now the empowerment is gone and we are back to our normal damage. So this is an absolutely fantastic way to build your damage. Now, Nature's Wrath is not going to be good for every single build. I do not recommend it for every single build. But in this particular case, I am absolutely loving it. And I have one other build that some of you might have seen on stream already, but I have one other build with Nature's Wrath that I'm very, very excited to put a video together on to show all of you. But that is my musket build. I'm really, really happy with it, and it's been working absolutely wonderful for me. The Nature's Wrath chest piece is a very unique chest piece, and honestly, it's one that doesn't work with every single build, but it's been working really well with my musket build, and I have one other build, like I said, that I am going to be sharing with you guys, so definitely make sure you subscribe for that, because it is going to be a fantastic build that I've been having a lot of fun with, and one of my favorite weapons in the game that actually got me into New World. Those of you who have been in stream lately might know which build that is, but I will be doing a full video on that as well. So I really do hope that this video helps you out and gives you a little bit more insight into Nature's Wrath as well as just a musket build in general. But I wanted to showcase it with my musket because I've been so happy with it and really happy that we're able to still stack some damage with it. It's just the musket build itself had to change and be adjusted quite a bit because there are certain musket builds and certain builds in general that just will not work with Nature's Wrath and give you the maximum amount of damage because of the fact that like it's revolving around different empowerments and stuff. So if you have empowerments that you need to rely on, Nature's Wrath probably is not the chess piece for you, but if you have builds that don't rely on empowerments and instead rely on a lot of base damage increases or like CC damage increases, stuff like that, then I think it can actually work really, really well for you. But that is gonna do it for today's video. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.